Welcome to the Songwriter Connection Podcast, where we look at the craft of songwriting through the eyes of the songwriter. Each week, we make a connection with a music maker, listen to their songs, and hear their stories. From Nashville, Tennessee, here's your host, Dave Lenahan. I just, I get the feeling that we're going to go a lot deeper than just songwriting today. We're going to talk about creativity and a lot of other great things. I've got a fantastic host that I just can't wait to uh, introduce you to, make a connection with today. But first, let me tell you about our sponsor. It's Mark Allen Barnett Tours. There are a lot of different tours when you come into Nashville that you can take the ghost tours, the tours of the Ryman. And, you know, we recommend you do all that. But if you're a songwriter and a creative person and you want to find out more about the music industry, well, Mark Allen is your tour guide. Mark Allen Barnett, M-A-R-C dash A-L-A-N. Barnett's got the E-T-T-E on the end. Look him up. You'll find him on the web. Uh, go to his website. He's a fantastic performer and songwriter. In fact, he was just over here around the dining room table yesterday, and we were writing a song. Um, he's a great guy, and he will tour you through uh, Nashville, introduce you to music types. He'll get you on stage performing. He'll look at your songs line by line. He'll help you develop that craft. And he'll get you out there. Up your game three to five years in just a simple tour with my good friend Mark Allen Barnett. Mark, he always says, you don't choose music, music chooses you. And it's a, it's so true. <laughs> so check out Mark, if you will. And Mark, thank you so much for sponsoring our show. Well, our guest today, um, let me tell you a little bit about him. He's internationally uh, known, uh, a in-demand life coach uh, for songwriters and creative types like you, a critically acclaimed author. Um, a college songwriting professor. Um, he's an artist, too, uh, releasing under uh, the Electron Love Therapy, uh, and, and we're going to talk about that, too. Uh, but he's also a producer. He's had a lot, <laughs> thousands of placements in film and TV. We talk about sync placements all the time. We can get into that a little bit today, probably. And he was at one time named Best Independent Electronic Ar- Artist in the World, and we're really Really honored to have uh, our friend today, Jeff Lizowitz. How are you, Jeff? Hello, hello, and happy to be here. Thanks for having me here. I already want to go on uh, on the tour with, with, with your buddy over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that it's, sounds awesome. It is really cool, yeah. Hey, you know, I want to thank you, first of all, for reaching out on the Internet through an email and uh, sending me your book, which I read and could not put down. It's it's a great read, and it's chock full of such great information. And right right off the bat, let's let's tell folks about it because uh, this is a book that people are talking about and need to read. If you're a creative type, you need this book. It's called, and, and I love the title of it, "Not Effing Around: The No BS Guide for Getting Your Creative Dreams Off the Ground." It's a great book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's it's a lot to unpack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's so many questions I want to talk to you about, so many things I want to hear from you. And let's start simply with this, okay? If you don't mind, you've got an interesting definition of what creativity is, don't you, Jeff? What is creativity? Well, I mean, people often think of creativity as, you know, the places where creativity is pointed, like music or dance or writing or things like that. But really, creativity is taking different ideas which may or may not be common commonly linked and then putting them into action in some way Mm -hmm. right so you know really anything can be a creative act in fact your life your life as a concept is a creative you're creating as you go huh you're creating as you go. It's like a it's like a long jam session. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of jazz in there. <laughs> Lots of jazz, you know, different you know, some metal over here yeah. and some country over here. You Taste know, it all, knows? you know, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so but you had this you defined uh what it does for you, uh yeah. which I just loved in one of your videos, uh, to be seen, to express ah, and to okay, connect. Yeah. And um uh, sure. And to me, that really hit me. So if you yeah. go into deep in, into that a little bit. Sure, yeah. absolutely. So so creativity at its best. So I have been around the block, let's just say, mm-hmm. in my creative endeavors, starting as a little kid and, you know, up till the present moment. And I've had, you know, what I would consider some pretty solid successes and also tons of failures. Mm -hmm. But what I've realized at the end of the day with all this stuff is that creativity at its best 
is a way for us to be seen, expressed, healed, and connected. So what am I talking about? So let's go through each of these words. Yeah. So to be seen. Often in this life, I believe we are not particularly well seen. When you're driving down the freeway or walking down the city street, you're basically anonymous, right? Mm. And you move a little bit closer and, you know, with acquaintances, maybe people at work or somebody at the coffee shop or the bar or something like that, they know you and they might kind of get you, but they don't really care. They don't really know you that much. And then you've got your last circle and that is, you know, the inner circle, right? This is your good friends, your lovers, your partners, your kids, your family, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they see you and get you and understand you. But in my experience, it's, it's a sort of limited perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's being seen. So what does it mean to be expressed? Well, in my definition, it simply means moving from the potential to the actual. Okay. So think about a dancer on Saturday night where she's sitting in the corner of the, of the room, the disco ball spinning, the drinks are pouring, you know, the music is thumping, but she's not dancing in that moment. Mm -hmm. In that moment, she's not expressed. She gets on that dance floor and starts shaking her, you know, shaking it. Then she's expressed as a dancer in that moment, just like as a guitar player, right? You're expressed as a guitar player, not while the guitar is sitting in the corner, <laughs> but when you're playing the freaking guitar. Right. Okay. So then what's this healed business? Well, I believe, and, and I, I think any creative who has, who has created with a sense of authenticity and vulnerability understands that there is a sense of healing involved in that creative act. Okay, so... Oftentimes, this is a catharsis, mm -hmm. a letting go of the darkness, a, you know, that kind of thing. And that is, of course, healing. But that isn't the only kind of healing. The other kind of healing is a celebration, right? right. What's, the, what's the healing in a love song? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, my gosh, I found my new love and all, this, all the lonely nights are gone, you know? We've got this whole new thing. So I get it, yeah. When we are seen, expressed, and healed through our creativity, we then give our gift of creativity to the world. And when I say the world, I'm not talking about Madison Square Garden and the top of the <laughs> Spotify charts or something like that. That's cool, I'm too. About, yeah. <laughs> and that's cool, too. Yeah. You know, go for it. Mm -hmm. You know, But it can be only one other person. Yeah. When you give your gift of creativity to the world, here's where it gets really cool. Because that is where you become the gift. Right. If you show others that they can be seen, expressed, and healed through creativity. That is when cool. we do yes, when we do this as as songwriters or artists of any kind, it changes our role from oh, I'm gonna sing a song to sort of like this underground secret rock star ninja army, <laughs> which is there to help heal the world. Because one of the biggest things in this life that causes so much problem is not being seen and connected through who we really are and respected through who we are. That so, is such a cool concept. It is. Yeah. And that changes the song from like, oh, that's cool to hum, which there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with a song like Right? right. But it can it can go deeper into when you think of your favorite songs. Right. Right. There's something in that where you're like, oh, they're talking to me. Yes. That artist understands what I feel. That's what we strive to do as songwriters. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask you this. The dancer that won't go on the floor, the singer that won't get up on stage or play that guitar. What's holding them back? Is it effing around or what, what is it? <laughs> well, uh, it could be a million different things for sure. It can be anything from effing around, which is, you know, I, I just, I want to do it, but you know, I don't have the, the wherewithal or the courage mm -hmm. or I don't think I'm good enough. Yeah. So it it's fear be, basically, right? Is it fear? 
Fear, yes, fear mm-hmm. is one of the things that stops us in yeah. many, many situations. Got to step outside that comfort zone sometimes. Huh. Exactly. Absolutely. And and from from reading your book in 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 uh, some of your blogs. And by the way, uh, Jeff is with us today uh, from Seattle, uh, yep. Washington, mm-hmm. where you're based. And you've got a great website. Tell them uh, the website is. Sure. It's a uh, Jeff dot com. Easy, uh, but spell it. <laughs> yeah, that would be Jeff, J-E-F-F, L-E-I, S like Sam, A-W-I-T-Z. Okay. If you put in to Google Jeff Lysowitz and spell it any, you know, horrendous way you want. <laughs> You're going to find you. Life coach, I think you'll probably find <laughs> you, it. You are going to, and it's a great site. It, the blogs are fantastic, super reading, great videos on there, and of course a lot more about about your book. So I want to encourage people uh, to do that. But in one of the videos on, on that site, you talked about the importance of your comfort zone. It's there for a reason, and how to step out of it, huh? Yeah. So comfort zone is, you know, we all love the comfort zone. Yeah. Because, well, geez, if nothing else, it's comfortable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Hey, who doesn't like some comfort? Give me a decent couch, you know, whatever, yeah. get a stereo set up in the right place, you're good. Yeah. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with the comfort zone. How, however, when you are in the comfort zone, the problem with it is if you stay too long, there is no growth. Right? The comfort zone is safe, the comfort zone is comfortable, but there's no growth. Mm-hmm. And as humans, we want to grow. In fact, it's, I believe it's built into us biologically or spiritually or something. Mm-hmm. So we need to move outside of our comfort zone to have a richer, more expansive, more successful life. And you know, I've got my little process here that sounds so simple, and it really is if you do it. So here's here's how you would think about the comfort zone. Okay. Uh, imagine like a circle on a piece of paper, and you're a dot in the middle. Okay, so you're the dot, and the comfort zone is surrounding you. Ah, I'm in the comfort zone. You know, mm-hmm. bring me another beer. Or whatever. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, I'm there. <laughs> okay. You're like, okay, I'm so there. far, so good. All right. So... To step out of the comfort zone, we often think of stepping miles out of the comfort zone. I'm quitting my job and moving to New York to, you know, audition for Broadway. You know, kind of outside of the comfort zone. But you're not really saying that. Yeah. No, it's not necessary to take these huge steps. So let's just take a little step, one step out of the comfort zone. Okay, and whatever this means to you. So choose your own adventure. So there you are outside of the comfort zone. What's the first thing that's going to happen? It's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah, it is. Right? Uh But here's the thing. Where many people will instantly jump back into the comfort zone, you must stand there and feel the discomfort. Mm. Just feel it. The first thing you're going to notice is that you didn't die. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Right? Sometimes we may feel like that, but chances are, unless you're doing something 20 miles out of that comfort zone, you're, you're going to survive. It's, it's going to be weird or, uh, you know, uncomfortable, but you're going to be fine. So you stand there with the discomfort, and sooner or later, something is going to happen. And that is the comfort zone expands to meet you. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Right? So it you does. Do your, you do your very first podcast. Oh, man, I'm nervous. I'm going to screw this up. <laughs> How do I run all this gear? You know, whatever, all this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. You do a bunch of them, piece of cake. You're yeah. In the conference. And the more you do it, you know, you had a personal experience uh, dealing with this and, and I just can't imagine, I know you should do stand up comedy and, and improv. Mm. And for me, it, for me, a, a radio guy stepping out from the microphone, going on a stage with a guitar, that was hard for me, you know, and it was outside my comfort zone at first when I did it years ago. For you, I can't imagine going up on a stage. You can't hide behind a guitar. It's you and a microphone. <laughs> that's that's got to be uncomfortable, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is definitely uncomfortable. <laughs> and I have had these kinds of experiences. And for whatever reason, I feel compelled to move forward on these various journeys, whether it's music or filmmaking or writing or public speaking right. or you know all these kinds of things. And I just watched an amazing video by a guy called Andrew, Dr. Andrew Huberman, who was a neuroscientist. Wow. 
Okay. So, okay. so let's get into some neuroscience. Let's, yes. Here. Yes. Because I just love learning stuff and giving it to anybody who will listen, basically. Mm-hmm. So he says, and this is backed by science, that what drives us forward in our ambitions is the dopamine that we get mm. from doing it. However, the big key on this thing is not to sort of psychologically assign the dopamine to the success, but to the journey. Oh, interesting. Right? Yeah. And this is something that I learned way back in college as a, as a creative writer. My teacher would always say, it's about the process, not the product. Mm. If Think you love writing the song, mm-hmm. that is going to help you write more songs. If you love, you know, the rush of the success, oh, the songs on the radio or whatever that thing is, that's great. Mm-hmm. But it actually is not nearly as powerful a motivator as loving the journey to get there. Oh, that's exactly right. You know, it, it sounds to me like you're saying, and, and this was this was in your book too. You got you got to find out where your passions lie, and where your what your gifts are, and then it's your job in this world, I think, to share those gifts, right? That's kind of what you're saying, and especially in that first chapter of that book, huh? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are... So the funny thing about humans is mm. we are both completely unique snowflakes. Right? Yeah. No one has ever lived your life out of the billions and billions of people who have, who have walked this earth. And yeah. we are also built in a very similar way, both uh, physiologically and psychologically. Mm-hmm. We all want the same things. We want freedom and security, right? We want right. respect. We want love. We want to add value to the world in some way. So in being a creative, when you know you're a creative and you have, you know this, it beats in your heart. Mm-hmm. I believe it is then literally your duty to act in your truth in such a way that expresses your truth to the world, whatever that means. I agree with it like totally. If, if you are going to be this kind of snowflake, if you were born this snowflake, mm-hmm. well, it's your job in one way or another, whether it's open mic nights or the top of the charts, mm-hmm. to do your thing, to be seen, expressed, healed, and connected. Amazing. I couldn't say it any better. That's just fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about the book, NFA. And I know I've seen uh, videos of people going, yeah, they're getting all NFA'd. You know, we're not effing around. And what did you mean by that concept? Do, you, do, do we naturally do that? How do we stop effing around? Well, you know? well let's rewind it a little bit. What yeah. is NFA? So NFA. Not, not effing around mm-hmm. is NFA. That's my little NFA. back on there. And FA is, of course, effing around. Right. So what are the definitions here? Not effing around to me means living a life that is true to yourself, that is passionate, Mm -hmm. that is alive, that is excited about life, and that somehow serves or adds value to the whole. Gotcha. Okay? So, you know, we are both individuals. I mean, we're, you're definitely an individual. You're a guy. I'm a guy. There's people out there. Right? <laughs> right? And we are all part of the human experience here. Yes, we are. Mm-hmm. Thus, by serving only yourself, bad idea. That goes into ego and self-destruction and greed and all those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Um, on, on the flip side of just serving others, you're not taking care of yourself. So that's a problem too. Finding the balance in there is part of the NFA experience. So being lit up yourself and being able to give and receive from the world. When we do that, if if you do that for real on a daily basis, your heart and your, your physical health, everything about your life will will be good or, you know, I mean, obviously the world is going to knock you around a little bit, Mm -hmm. but you are going to be on the path that is true to you. 
Mm-hmm. And what happens so much in this world is, you know, as we grow up, we're little kids and we, you know, we're tapped into these kinds of ideas and, and this freedom and this creativity. As we get older, we tend to become more self-conscious. We do. Which then, which then stops us from being the individual because we want to fit into the group in school with the friends and then at work and all these different things. And before you know it, you've lost so much of your individual individuality and creativity. And that is what makes you the snowflakes. And that is truly where your value lies. And we're not talking to snowflakes in any political kind of manner here. <laughs> I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes uh, liberal folks are called <coughs> snowflakes, <clears throat> unfortunately. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we're not talking anything political here. We're talking no, creativity. No, this is not a political conversation. <laughs> not a political conversation. One of the things okay. in the book that's really struck me is uh, talking about failure. Not only do you not, you, you can't be afraid to fail, but you're saying fail early. <laughs> fail a lot. You know, so and get started before you're ready. You know, if you yes. could talk about those concepts, they're just fantastic. Sure. So fail fast. Exactly. Fail fast. So, yeah. So the, the, the first thing that we want to do in considering failure is sort of reframing these words. When I, when I say the word failure, you know, people freak out. Nobody yeah. wants to fail. No. No. However, we can look at failure in a different in a different way. And I would, I would say just simply change the word failure to feedback. Mm. Okay. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So if you start, you know, you're doing your thing and you have a goal, it's kind of the trajectory and you do it. And guess what? You don't reach your goal in one way or another, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. One way to say is, Oh, I failed. <clears throat> and oftentimes when people say that, they retreat, they stop, and they never even try again. Yeah. Not helpful. Not. Okay. As mm-hmm. a life coach, I'm all about the helpful. Right. So instead, we we go towards the goal. We don't get the whole way there. Let's change the failure to feedback. So what does that mean? Let's look at what you did and what you didn't do and ask every possible question from every perspective. What worked, what didn't work, why, how, when. Anything you can think of, be true with those answers and be honest with yourself, Mm -hmm. right? Once you have this new information, what do you do? Set a new goal or or the same goal and step forward again. What's likely to happen? More feedback. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Five seconds. You keep doing this. You keep iterating. You keep learning and growing, getting out of that comfort zone and stepping forward That's right. and mm-hmm. yeah, eventually you are going to succeed. I have interviewed many, many, many creatives. I, I don't know if I uh, mentioned this before. I, uh, back in the nineties was, I got a job at a big radio station here that discovered. I read uh, about this. Yeah. Yes. Grunge. Right in the middle of the grunge of, uh, yeah. of the nineties. Yeah. yeah. Changed music, crazy. changed rock music. And you were a part of that, yeah. weren't you? Yeah, I was I was a part of it for sure. I went in there and they're like, uh, we, you know, we have a job for you mm-hmm. writing for a little thing that no one's ever heard of before called the Internet. Like, yeah. <laughs> so like, that sounds cool. That's on a computer or something. And like, yeah, it's on a computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, All right. Hard to imagine these days. Yeah. Hard to imagine. But that's what it started by. Mm-hmm. So. um in talking to these rock stars and many other creatives along the way, their relationship with failure is all the same. Hey, rock star, how do you like failure? Oh, freaking sucks. <laughs> can't stand it. And it's my best friend mm-hmm. because it is the only way to get to success. I got you. And I said, and I said a big statement there, the only way. Only way. All right, I've got another um, question I wanted to ask you. All um, right. In, you know, we're doing this, we're getting this feedback. We are, are failing, it, but we're, we're, we're getting stronger for it as we go. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there, there's a, is there not a human tendency where you can overdo that? In other words, you've got this inner critic that will not let you 
uh, go forward uh, to your goals. Um, and how do you stop that? I, I really have friends, I think, that cripple themselves because they can't turn off that inner critic. It's not good. It's, ne- it's going to be better. Uh, it's always better. Uh, it can always be better. What do you well, say about that? Well, yeah. First thing I say is send your friends to me and I'll, I'll <laughs> give them the coaching and we'll get this yeah. worked out. Yeah. Um, but in a, in a more general sense, you're right. Inner, the inner critic, or what I like to call the ick, ick. is... It, yeah, is a psychological part of us which tries to keep us safe by coming up with a bunch of different voices which say all the things that your friends say. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have enough money, enough time. Any, anything you can think of that will stop you from, you know, stepping forward into what you want right. in life. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing about the inner critic is, it is there for a reason. And the reason is a good reason. And the reason is to keep you safe. Okay. That's fine. We need to be safe. Yeah. However, in the modern world, what constitutes or what we might believe keeping us safe means is really oftentimes nowhere near accurate. Yeah. So back in the day, back in the jungle, right? The inner critic says, don't, Go pull on the lion's tail. <laughs> yep. Smart move. Inner mm-hmm. critic is like right on with that one. Fast forward up to present day. And, you know, the inner critic says, don't put out that song on Spotify because it's kind of weird and different. And, you know, you might lose followers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That is not a life and death situation. That is that is not a that is the inner critic is is doing its job. But it is doing it. It's like overloaded. It's yeah. doing more than you need. It's not that serving you. Yeah. It's doing its job, but it's not serving you. Mm-hmm. So what we really need to do is to understand and first be conscious of when these kinds of voices, the inner critic, etc., come up, right? What's stopping you? you? must be conscious of it. Mm-hmm. And I can talk all about meditation in a minute here, if you like. Mm-hmm. Um, but the more conscious you are, then you can make choices. You can say to yourself, wow, this is my inner critic. What's the worst that can happen? I can lose some followers. Hmm. Like, that's really not that bad. You know, maybe it'll be a big hit. Who knows? I'm really just guessing anyway. You're kind of going back to the comfort zone even a little bit there, too, aren't you? Yeah. Stepping beyond it, that. Yeah. Yeah, in a way. So again, the inner critic is there. It is your friend, mm-hmm. but it is not necessarily serving you well. So that so that is where you need to be more conscious. Yeah. Where you can discern is this voice in my head helping me or not? Yeah. And if it's not, turn it off. Right? That that's not well actually here's <laughs> here's really what you do, and this is crazy and a little counterintuitive. Okay. Yeah. So we tend to think of the inner critic and voices like this as our enemies. <laughs> you know, if the voice is like, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you can't play as well as that guy, you know, whatever, those kinds of things. It sounds like, you know, it sounds like the bad guy mm-hmm. talking, mm-hmm. right? But remember what its job is, it's to keep you safe. So at its core, it is, it is trying to serve you. Okay. So when the voice of the inner critic comes into your head and you identify it and you discern that, oh, oh, this is not something that I want to hear or listen to. Instead of saying, you know, get lost, inner critic, right? Take a minute and take a deep breath. And from, from the heart, from the truth, so be like, thank you, inner critic, for mm-hmm. doing your job to help protect me. However, I am not interested at this time and i do not need this kind of feedback right now so thank you that's cool and go away and the love it is basically Mm self-love it it, it reflects back into us and it dissipates that negative energy which is really positive energy but it's kind of it's kind of layered in negative energy yeah cool you know for me uh i i had a terrible inner critic um even if I go back to my radio days, we used to air check, you know, and uh, they were, they'd be on cassette. Every time you open the microphone, it would record, 
you know. And I would uh, drive home and I would listen to that. And, and I would maybe listen to the day's air check two, three times. P- nitpicking it. Why did I do that? What it, you know, and eventually I was driving myself crazy. And, and, and I wasn't growing, I, I don't think, as a broadcaster. And it was kind of the same. I reached the same thing as a performing songwriter, too. Uh, um, and, I, and I saw it from the experience I had through radio. And to me, the way I helped to get over it, and maybe, and I think this is what you're saying, um, I just accepted it. I said, you know, it is what it is, Dave. It is what it is, and people seem to enjoy it. And so, again, going back to those gifts, you know what they are. You need to be sharing them. And just understand you're going to grow, and you are going to get better, but don't beat yourself up to, to the point where you can't perform. You know, is that kind of what you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Beating, beating yourself up. Unkindness. Whether Unkindness. It's yourself, why do we, it's why your... are we so unkind to ourselves? <laughs> you, you know, why is that? Because it's a base response. Yeah. It's a simple yeah. response. If yeah. somebody hurts you, what the first thing you want to do is defend and yeah. then fight. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You're right. You're right. So that's what we do in ourselves. And it Mm -hmm. it is literally lower consciousness, which is why we need to think about these things and meditate on these things Mm -hmm. and practice these things so that when we do screw up, which we're bound to do, yeah, right. Instead of being like, you're an idiot, man, you know, it's like, okay, let's take a breath. Chris Farley hitting yourself in the head. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. It's it's much kinder. It's much more evolved. It's much more human. Yeah, exactly. Well, I just love talking to you, Jeff. I mean, you're just so much knowledge, and it's it's just so interesting to me uh, what you do. I really wanted to spend some time, too, talking about your music, and sure. I want to take a little break, and when we come back, I want to know about your musical journey, okay? Uh, this is uh, our our, uh, our host is uh, Red Circle. They're fantastic. If you're thinking of starting a, a podcast, they, they put it out there everywhere for me, uh, and we'll just take a little break to thank some of their sponsors, and we'll be right back. Jeff? Uh, Jeff Lisa, which is with us today from Seattle. He is a life coach for creative types and just a great guy. Hang on. All right. You're listening to the songwriter connection, connecting with music makers and hearing their songs and stories. Now back to the show with your host, Dave Linehan. Jeff Lee Swiss is our guest, and uh, we're Zooming with him from Seattle. Uh, just an amazing guy, life coach. Um, and you've had a very cool musical journey as well, and I want to I talk about that. Uh, so tell us where it started for you. Where did the musical journey start? <laughs> it, it started in a very specific moment. Yeah. So when I was a kid, I was kind of one of these weird, friendless kids. Mm. I don't know if your listeners can... Uh, can identify. Can identify <laughs> with that. Um, but I, when I was a little kid, this was like in the late seventies, I went to summer camp mm-hmm. out in the Pennsylvania, out in Pennsylvania, in the Pocono mountains, a place called camp log and twig. Oh, wow. You're, Beautiful you're place. A twigger, if you're a twigger out there, let me know. <laughs> anyway, I'm a little kid. And after uh, dinner every night, they had this concept called free play, uh-huh. which was where the kids would kind of run amok for an hour, do whatever you wanted. So this is about 1977, 78. And there was an empty cabin, and one of the counselors, one of these 20-year-old guys, brought up a drum kit, Mm -hmm. 70s stereo, and a couple of boxes of 70s records. And I, as a little kid, would sit under this tree, maybe 30, 40 feet away, while this guy would play drums to the records in the cabin. And this was, you know, as you know, Bowie and Zeppelin and Billy Joel, and like all (laughs) that awesome stuff was happening at that at that time so i'd sit out there and i the fireflies would be coming out and you know it was just like an amazing it it was amazing to listen to that music Mm -hmm. in there and one day this guy comes out on the porch and he's like hey kid come here like yeah (laughs) go up there he's like you want to come in and you know listen i was like uh yeah (laughs) so now we're out in the woods. Mm-hmm. It's a cabin, a stereo, a drum kit, and me. Mm-hmm. And this guy puts on the Who song, Won't Get Fooled Fool again. again. Oh, yeah. And you know that's a rocker. Yeah. And this guy starts banging the crap out of these drums, and my little seven-year-old heart just explodes. And I'm like, dang, music is a thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
it is. And that's uh, that's the origin story, I guess. <laughs> what was your first instrument? Uh, first instrument was guitar. Guitar. Okay. Yes. Played acoustic guitar uh, with a lame, what I would consider a lame teacher. It did not go very well. No. I stopped. It, you know, I was, you know, then I'm sort of getting into my early teens mm-hmm. and I'm turning into a bit of a delinquent. <laughs> and my parents are like, you got to get a hobby. You got to do something after school. I'm like, I will play the electric guitar. I will, I will play guitar, but it's, it has to be an electric guitar. And I picked the teacher. Okay. And they're like, all right. So they got me this like piece of crap electric guitar. <laughs> and I found this long haired metal guy. Oh, yeah. And this is somewhere. <laughs> and man, everything changed. <laughs> everything changed. I remember uh, listening to one of your interviews. You said you were practicing David Bowie riffs. And, uh, yes. you know, as, w- with your guitar um, as a youngster. And I, the, the question that burned in me is, which riff was it? Was it Rebel Rebel or what? It was, Re- <laughs> was it Rebel Rebel. Rebel? I knew it. Was. it. <laughs> I mean, I always love that riff. And, uh-huh. you know, as a player, I'm sure your listeners and you get this. When you can realistically emulate something that you hear on the radio or on a record or whatever for the first time. Oh yeah. It's like, it's like, you gotta be kidding. I'm doing what that thing is. You talk about creativity. That's it is. I mean, you know, yeah, it, it is magic. It is transformative. It is. I did this. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I did this. Yeah. And it, you know, for me, and I think for a lot of people listening, probably they do that for the first time Mm -hmm. and they're like, I can do this myself. I can come up with my own raps. Yeah. I can make my own music. Maybe I can be on MTV. <laughs> Absolutely. And the journey starts. <laughs> and you yeah. start to fail, and there you go. But you're not at NFA, baby. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Uh, tell us about Electron uh, Love Therapy. Electron Love Theory. Theory, is... I'm sorry. Yes. Yep, I right. knew that. Well, it's a... It's and, a bit of a and I know I'm messing too. up your name occasionally too. It's yeah, Lizowitz, right? right? Lizowitz. Lizowitz. Yep. I'm an idiot. Uh, so, so <laughs> no, 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 no. So you, so Electron Love Theory is yeah. the name I came up with for my musical project, which is mostly me. Mm-hmm. Although I get various singers involved, different live musicians, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but it's mostly me doing the songwriting and production and all that. I started this about um, about maybe 90, wow, geez, what what was it? Maybe 98 or 99. And uh, the the first big thing that happened was I decided I'd been writing songs for decades already. Yeah. I was a Mm -hmm. teenager. And I realized, hey, all the songs that I write are from my perspective, even if I put them in third person. Mm Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be interesting to record people who have very different stories to tell, cut their voices into electronic music, and kind of make songs out of that? Mm-hmm. So I did this. I went around uh, Seattle. At first, I, I decided who did I want to talk to, and then found the subject. So one of them was a heroin addict. Mm-hmm. One of them was a woman who had a near-death experience. One was a Buddhist mystic. Wow. I recorded them cut their voices into the music and, um, you know, created an album, that album or a song in particular about a blind man yeah, and his experience of uh, living life. One best independent electronic artist in the world at the time. And I was like, Oh Fantastic. yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Which, which was pretty cool. That was the good news. The, the second good news is all these labels are hitting me up all over the place. Send it to me, send it to me. I'm like, great. And then, you know, they listen to it, a call them back or whatever. And it's like, well, this is really cool. This is really creative, but we can't sign you because we don't know how to market, you know, an eight minute song about a blind man. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, yeah, you got a point, I guess. (laughs) Um, So anyway, that was one of those feedback moments. Let's just say that. Right. Now, I would like to play that song if I could. This is not the eight-minute version I'm pulling up. on. No, this is the single version. <laughs> this is the single yeah. version. And this is on Spotify, Electron Love Therapy. It's Jeff Lisowich. Lisowich. I'm going to get this. You're going to have patience with me. You could just... Uh... I got it. I got it. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. 
But this is a cool song, surrounded by shadows, the single makes. What I don't see with my eyes is unknown to me. The optic nerve is deteriorated to a point where the messages received by my eyes are not sent correctly to my brain. I suffer from glaucoma. I've had various eye traumas. Traumas. Sight is the awareness of things around you. Blindness is the lack of awareness. Blindness is not not being, being able to navigate. It's a song that made our guest uh, the uh, best independent electronic artist of the world back in 2000, right? Great song. Many years ago. Mm, man. <laughs> I tell you, Surrounded by Shadows. What an interesting concept and uh, wonderful the way you put that together. Um, yeah. So your producer, you've even done films. Uh, Jeff Lizowitz is our guest today, uh, has done so much. And as a uh, also a fantastic uh, in-demand life coach. And again, I just... Uh, want you to go to his website and check it out. Uh, maybe you can use his services and you've certainly uh, give us a lot to think about, Jeff. Just amazing to have you here. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And I know you're a busy guy. And I don't want to take up a lot, uh, a lot of your time, but I want to again um, talk about the book. Um, it, it's one of those that when, as soon as I saw the title, I knew I had to read this book and I could not put it down once I started. So it's uh, NFA. Not effing around. And the subtitle? The No BS Guide for Getting Your Creative Dreams Off the Ground. And we're going to get them off the ground. Is that not right? Absolutely. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's, what that's what we're doing. Yeah. 
Jeff, thanks for your time and, and for spending with us. Um, there's like only about a million more questions I'd want to ask you, but I want to be respectful of your time. So promise me that sometime we'll we'll come back and, and talk about more of this. Yeah, stuff. absolutely. Yeah, yeah totally. Like, absolutely. like I know you do this this guided meditation, um, yeah. but you, you do it a little differently, you know. Like, uh, and I did a lot of that with. Um, like when I was quitting smoking, for instance, you know, and uh, self hypnosis and things like that, that you put beats into it and things. I, I, we'll talk about that concept and more. Uh, we'll have to get together again, and I and I really hope that we will. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I'd love to. Yeah. Like Everybody, get the book, and uh, you know you're going to love it. And and join us again next week on our songwriter connection, Jeff. Thank you so much. Do you want to add Absolutely. one more thing? Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. more thing. Yeah. Um, and that is. Besides the book, which is certainly a great read, at least I think so. Yeah. And uh, Dave thinks so. I do. I highly recommend it. (laughs) Um, I'm happy to do complimentary Zoom sessions. Oh, cool. With people. Yeah. So you can just go to the website again if you can find it, jefflizowitz.com, and you can see more about the coaching. And I'm happy to do a complimentary coaching session to see how I can help you really step it up uh, in, in your life in general, in business, in creativity, and all the things that matter, really. That's fantastic. I hope you'll do that. And Jeff, thanks again. Appreciate you so much, man. All the best. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Thank you for listening to the Songwriter Connection podcast. Find us on social media at Songwriter Connection. Also, listen to Dave Lanahan's Nashville Connections radio show. It streams live every Friday morning on WOBL and WNOI. Look for us on Facebook and YouTube. See you next time on Songwriter Connection.